So I had another question that someone wanted to know, is coffee bad for your liver? Okay. Well, actually, and I'm going to list the studies down below, it's hepatoprotective. It actually has the ability to protect your liver. The liver is about 3.3 pounds, the size of a football. It's located right here. It's one of the largest organs that you have, second to the skin. And it does a lot of things. It filters toxins. It's involved in blood sugars. It helps make bile. It stores fat soluble vitamins. Its main job is to detoxify though, but it has a total of about 500 functions. And coffee has the capacity to protect liver cells and even decrease liver enzymes. So what is in coffee that can benefit the liver? It's the phytonutrients, plant-based chemical antioxidants, okay? It contains a lot. I listed several right here and they can help you regulate bile. They have anti-inflammatory effects increasing vitamin D, stabilizing blood sugars, reducing insulin. Anything that reduces insulin is going to help your liver because one of the causes of liver damage is high insulin. If you have a phytonutrient that can help minimize that damage, it can improve the liver cells. And it's interesting because coffee actually has more antioxidants than tea, even green tea, and even red wine. And if you're thinking, what about when they roast it? Aren't they destroying the enzymes? Actually, when you roast the bean, you increase the antioxidants, which is quite interesting. But realize that when you grind the coffee bean, okay, and it's exposed to oxygen, you lose a lot of the antioxidants. So if you're going to consume coffee, make sure that the time span between when you're grinding the coffee and you're actually drinking the coffee is not too long because oxygen can destroy these phytonutrients. Okay, so now you get all the positive things about coffee. There's a few negatives, okay? Number one, caffeine. Caffeine can stimulate the sympathetic nervous system. That's the flight or fight. That's like activating your adrenals, okay? So this can greatly decrease your ability to sleep and that can create a whole series of issues. How much coffee do I recommend? Personally, I would recommend doing one cup in the morning, okay? not before bed. So if you drink it in the morning, obviously it'll actually give your system and your liver a chance to break this down so you can actually sleep at night. But if you're drinking too much coffee, you can get an overstimulation of the sympathetic nervous system. I mean, if you ever see the long lines at Starbucks, um, there's people drinking coffee all day and all night. So if you have fatigue and you're tired all the time and you're drinking coffee to stay awake, you're kind of covering up an underlying problem that you should fix. And if you do have fatigue, I put a link down below of what causes that so you can fix that. But so many people are using coffee to stimulate and boost their energy, but they end up wearing out the uh, a part of the autonomic nervous system and then they have issues down the road, okay? All right, chemicals. The coffee bean is the most heavily sprayed crop in the world. So there's so many chemicals that are sprayed on these coffee beans. So just do organic coffee. Problem solved. All right, last point is this. The more caffeine you consume, the more depletion of certain vitamins, specifically vitamin B1, calcium, and potassium. So if you're consuming too much coffee, you're going to have to put those vitamins back. All right, so that's the end of the video. And now I want you to comment below and tell me how many cups of coffee do you consume per day and how large are those cups of coffee. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Daily notifications, that sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis. How about that?